Tell me who you are. Tell me where you're from. And tell me um, what, what program you're in. My name is Enyo Jata Smith, and I'm from Oregon. I'm here with my family. Aww. And I just finished the DNP program. Congratulations. Thank you. One of the reasons I did the program was to gain leadership skills, to learn language, where I could talk to the leaders at my clinic because they didn't have clinical experience. So I had to get on their level right. in right. order right. to talk about the systems and talk about what kind of outcomes are really evidence based. Right. Another reason I went to the program was for my family because I want to be in a position where I can create my own business exactly, and not have to send them to summer camp because I'm working, but choose to send them because it's something that they want to do, right? So one of the questions I have though is, you know, I have a project, I did my project, I have an idea, but now I'm at a, in a situation where I want to collaborate with people and I want to share information, but how do you do it in a way where, like you said, you're not giving over intellectual property, yeah. Yeah. but you're still able to collaborate with people so that you can move forward with your pro with your business idea or project? That's a great question. Uh, so the one thing is, and I'm glad you brought this up, uh, just something about your writing and stuff. Uh, your internet intellectual property, just like how you're thinking, it, it is yours. Does that make sense? So you don't go talking about that until it's refined. Because trust me, people will take your stuff. I'll tell you a little thing happening to me now. I created and did all kinds of things in the world, patents, books, etc. And then every now and then, there'll be somebody who will write me to say, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And I think you had something to do with that. And I'd like to mention you. And that's exactly what my lawyer say, cease and desist. And here is the article that talks about the history of what you're doing. I'm, my expectation is you're, <laughs> you're not doing that video. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, but basically, uh, what you, once you live as long as I've lived, I have a whole group of folk out there now trying to say, I started this program, I did this program. But historically, I've written all the history. And so for you, you're not ready yet to build the collaborations probably that you want to. You need a kitchen cabinet. We all do. You need people who love you, don't want nothing from you. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is to see you become the person they want you to be. Those are the people you need to hunt and find. You need to feed them. You know, it's like, I will feed you. Come be with me. I need to talk to you. And I'm going to feed you. And you'd be surprised. People love that. Breaking bread, having coffee with somebody that doesn't want nothing from you. But basically, they are the head of the heads of the head of the heads. And they will take time to be with you, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. That's what you need to do. If you don't have your stuff refined because you are beautifully brilliant and bold, it'll be so easy to take it from you. And then the next day, you'll be reading about your stuff in the New York Times. So, right, Faye? Yes. Totally. Uh, because if it's not published, then they say, well, I had the same thing. But if it's written in, in the literature, in an article or someplace, you can claim it. And when you go to have a conversation, you have the article and say it's published, it's yes. here. And ex and so it becomes yours. And absolutely. I so totally agree. That's right. And these concept papers, you got to publish them yes. someplace. You can't put them in your dresser drawer. I totally agree with you. When I finished my dissertation, I had I went to I had already written so much and had so much grants and stuff. By the time I went to Howard, I was associate professor, 30, 30 some years old. All right, you got to do this now. Your dissertations, you should have a minimum five great peer-reviewed articles. You also need to do a lot just yourself. Now I love people, um, and, and when I sit around tenure committees. This is what people say. Well, I don't see that Lucy has never written an article by herself. Now, you, and I'm not going to get too, um, even though you know I want to, too racially. But, but here's, the, here's the disparity. The other person that might look totally different than the person that Lucy is ain't wrote nothing 
but it might be the third or fourth article among people. And, and they count that. But then the other person, because they see that person with all people that, that, that she just was writing and writing and writing with, but they don't know what she did, does not get to. And so basically, that's why you got to do your own things. You got to write op eds, you got to write historical things, you got to publish your concepts, you got to do all kinds of things now to own that IP, copyright, patent, trademark. Does that make sense? So I would say you're not ready yet because the minute you go to people, hello, I feel good about myself, I just finished their um, minority fellowship program, and you know, I'm going to be having my new clinic over here in the hood. Thank you with everybody, and um, my, you know, I'm happy my children will get to go to summer camp. And this is really the, here's the violin. Mm, moon River. We get ready to get on the canoe. And they will go and get that lawyer. Next thing you know, you will look in the local paper. It's like, they took my whole idea. This has happened to black and brown people since the beginning of time. So don't let that happen to you. Don't let that happen to you. So I hope I helped you with that. You got to get your own kitchen cabinet now. People who love you. It can't be nurses. You, yeah, you can have one or two nurses. But, you know, a lot of, <laughs> but you need finance. You need IT. You need fun, fun, uh, people who can fund you. You need to write your first grant. You know, one other thing about the American Nurses Association. Once again, some of my colleagues are here. I was one of the, maybe the only black nurse that got the W.K. Kellogg funding for the community-based healthcare nurse grant. So some of y'all remember that. That was back in the time with Gloria Johnson and different people. She was the vice president. Gloria, Gloria Smith, I'm sorry. Gloria Smith, God rest her soul. She was wonderful. Uh, I loved her. Lord, she gave me hell. You know, we had, some of us grew up with nurses that would call you at 3 o'clock in the morning. Had it Yes. And, you know, at first one, you know, because we're psych nurses, like, what is this at three in the morning? Well, you get used to it, just so you know, okay? But, I mean, they would call you up and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. And basically, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. So Gloria was definitely like that in my life. Stephanie, you are going to go so far and everything. You're going to be this nurse, and you're going to do this. And I told some of my colleagues, I'm like, Ooh, I just don't know what to think. And then one, one of my other mentors said, oh, if she told you all of that, she really likes you. If she, she, cause she, if she don't like you, she don't say nothing to her. <laughs> <laughs> but the long and short of the story, being with the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and the National Consumers League and the American Nurses Association, that did that um, uh, while I was doing the MFP program. Okay, so I had the two fellowships. And that allowed me to also take my research. I worked with uh, teen pregnancy prevention, gang warfare in R Richmond, Virginia, down in Charlottesville, Virginia, and really t t do a great product and, and build the, what I call the consortiums and bring everybody to the table to take care of youth, okay? Um, and so my dissertation and everything when I went to be the White House fellow was the prototype for the teen pregnancy prevention program for, um, uh, HHS. So, I'm, I'm, and then my research that I did was also highlighted as uh, as one of the best research that had been done at NIH in the Office of Women's. Get your research done. Does that make sense? Get your research done. And that was with Dr. Vivian Penn. And many of you've heard of her. Yeah. She was renowned. So all I'm saying is, those are the type of people you got to find. People like that. They don't want your product. Because they got their own stuff. But what they want to do is look at you and say, oh, you know, I do this now. And I said, I love everything about you. Let me help you. And I have things where I give to people that want to start their own company. Here's your checklist. And I'm happy to give you that. And then you, you have to check it and list it. <laughs> and check it. All right. Good. All right. Who else? Come on now. We got time. It's five after five. So we got time. I'm with you until 530. What do you want to know? What do you want to talk about? Reflections, yes, conversations. Your name, where you're from, what program you're in? Uh, my name is Nina Moore. I live in New Jersey. Okay. And I am in the Psych Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program at Northern Kentucky University. Very good. Um, my question to you is, you say you come from an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial family. Yes. 
Um, but what made you want to take the leap to open your own business? Uh, because uh, basically, uh, I ain't trying to be poor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to be the tail. I'm going to be the head. Okay, so it's a, it's a mentality. And then I have a greater uh, North Star, which is I'm trying to, to bring people to wholeness and wellness worldwide. And so every, that's my mission. And so it's all about vision and mission and why you want to do what you need to do. Um, but you will get like this in your life. Why, why shouldn't you be dean? Here you are, better than the dean mm -hmm. and answering to the dean. How come you can't be chair of the department when, when once again here come Elizabeth or Karen and they ain't done nothing, they ain't wrote nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that it basically is I have a strong belief that people who are black and brown should own all their things. They should own their own companies. They should have the IP and everything for all their thinking. And, and get out of that, you know, working for somebody. Well, I guess the second part to that question would be um, oftentimes we want to help the community and change the community, and we get a lot of resistance. From the community? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. How do you continue to want to strive to fight for your goals when you meet that resistance that can be very, very strong? Oh, well, listen, it, I mean, it's right now we're, you know, I get calls all the time because, you know, I'm getting tired now from people like Chicago because in my life working with gang warfare and stuff down in Church Hill, Virginia, which was uh, very much similar to Compton back in my time, okay? But this is what I will say to you. Even every gangster needs a nurse, <laughs> okay? And so basically you want to change the community to get to know all the gangsters. That's right. And the other thing, too, is what my success was, every gangster has multiple children. So many people know I was the head of the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club down in the midst of everything in church here. Mm -hmm. And I was the head of doing all of that when I was in the MFP program, when I was in the W.K. Kellogg. And so that's why I was getting so many grants, because those young African-American boys, 400 of them plus, and then about 30 girls. Um, they were in a war zone. People were getting assassinated and, 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 you know, no parents, no this and that. But it's hard work. And so it, this is what I did back in those days, which is I had to walk and knock on every housing development door, you know, which, you know, hello, bullhorn, everything. Because I'm bold. Hi, I am the public health nurse, <laughs> which I was. And I'm here to be with you because today, I just want to let you know, got, got the clinic open, and we're doing all kinds of screenings, et cetera. And I'm having a party, too, so you can come and eat. Some of the food is healthy, some of it is not. And then um, I, I did all kinds of things like that to build myself and be part of the community. Does that make sense? And to go down deep. And so if a young child said to me, I don't have no mama, I ain't got no daddy, and this, do you have a grandma? Yeah, grandma's all I got. Okay, I want to go home with you today because I want to meet your grandma. So it's hard work. I think that's the thing. Some of the work that some of us have done in, in those very tough areas, um, you know, like even in Chicago, some people, they want to talk to me, and I'm like, you're on TV, you're ticking and talking, hipping and skipping, and God knows what else. But if you really want to change Chicago, you need to put on your bulletproof vest and wear a hammer too, just in case. It's a ricochet. And then learn, you know, learn how to do more than duck. Does that make sense? Yeah, do more than duck and get out there, roll up your sleeve. You are not ever going to do anything until you put your skin in it. And I think now what we're seeing is there's no skin in it. Everybody want to be an influencer and this and that. I want to link in. I think to myself, and your identity is on the black market being sold for two dollars. Okay, and link yourself in. Link yourself in. Feel that love. Okay, but does that help you? Yeah, I have black people. Look, even myself. Sometimes the black people invite me to come to black people things, and um, and and I and I love it. Okay, because I love the culture. Because I am the culture. But when we go there and everything, you know, it's just, we, it's like going to a, a funeral or, you know, going to church. I hate to be mean, but, you know, this new generation is like, 
Terro Rassi. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> now, if they hip it and skip it, hopping and jumping and everything, you gotta go up and in. Hip, hop, skip, jump. Does that make sense? Yeah, you gotta meet where they are. And I think sometimes for us, there's still a generation of us that's old school. OGs. I love it when young people say to me, Dr. Ferguson, you are an OG. <laughs> and you know what I say back? I am. <laughs> I am. Totally authentic and original. And I know all about your gangster craziness. You know, when I was in uh, day out working in Richmond, and I found out that this one group of people were taking all the kids' money because they would go to a local um, store to get the, the little candies and stuff after school. And I allowed that to happen. And, but then when they, when they came back, because they would show me how much money they went with, and then they would come back, and then they would have no money, and they had like a, at that time, 50 cent piece of candy. I said, wait a minute, what happened here? And they said, well, this is what they said. I said, no, that's 50 cent. You don't know how to, you, you can't count. Okay, so we're going to learn how to count. <laughs> and that was my thing with people. I said, you can go be with Pookie and Leroy and God knows who else. <laughs> But you can't do grams, you can't do fractions, and you can't count. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so it's going to be swing down, sweet chariot, come on, <laughs> take me home. <laughs> now, my thing is this, let's go learn how to be a scientist. And let's go do what you need to do and get out of this world. So I'm proud of the work I did that. But sometimes the people in Chicago, I'm like, you know, you don't have your skin in it. You get on the TV, you sit on the top of the building, downtown, and south side. <laughs> On a hunger slate. <laughs> I'm driving, you haven't lost anywhere. I'm just saying, you know, young people, they look at us. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't give up is what, you know, don't get up. Uh, bring in the young people to run it. And that has been my secret to success. Bring in the peers. Do peer counseling. You know, that's my whole <coughs> dissertation. Do the peer counseling. Bring in the peers. Give them the thing. Let them do it. Not you. And then it'll change things because they look up to each other and they're like, oh, I like this. This is my friend. I want to be like Lucy. I want to be like this. And that's what I've done in those situations. If, if you go in there, they're like, oh, God. Here comes uh, Dwayne's mother. <laughs> right? You got to get in it. You got to get in it. Okay, yes. Your name? We do a good. Hi, I'm Kamisha Grant. I live in Richmond, Virginia, and I am a TNP student at Johns Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. Richmond. Um, my question is, how do you navigate your multiple ventures like wisely? Do you not just go close? And have you had pushback when you've advocated for maintaining your IP? Have you lost opportunities because they didn't want you to be able to retain it? Oh no, honey, not ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let me tell you something. When you got things that they want. Um, you create the space for what seat they'll have at the table. Um, yeah. Different mentality. So now I have had no pushback. Money counts. <laughs> you know, most, pe most people are broke. They're like, if anything, they don't want to know how much money you're going to give. But yeah, no, no pushback on that. And that's back to my colleague over here. Get your stuff solid. Do all your writing. Be the person. You know, that's the whole point of walking boldly. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't want to tell them this because they might not get this job, you shouldn't even take that job. Mm -hmm. Right? You shouldn't take the job because it's not the right fit. Does that help you? All right, who else? We're moving rapidly. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Ferguson. David Ako from UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, my question to you, I mean, I admire your uh, involvement with global health. I think that that is one of the skill sets that we may not get in most uh, doctoral programs. And my question to you is that what is essential? What is the skill set that you need? And what is it that um, that may not be covered in the textbook that you need to be able to flourish and thrive in, in that uh, environment? That's a good question. I would say to you, you are getting everything that you need to be able to do that if you're at a great doctoral program. So this is why I love the MFP program. Um, at UVA, seven classes in statistics, seven classes in psychometrics, all right? And so methodology, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to be at the global table, you have to be that level scientist. And you got to know how to do all the surveys, how to analyze everything, how to do mixed methods, et cetera. So that's why I'm at the table, because I'm a scientist. And so you all will be at the table, too, because you're a scientist. They compared all those things you're learning now in your doctoral programs that you are able to take that knowledge, put that knowledge in action, 
what skills need to be further honed in, and then that's your ability. Does that make sense? So you're getting everything. It's how you use it. You know, so when I was studying in, in uh, psychometrics uh, community uh, psychology, that's where I learned how to be the queen of every psychological test and uh, survey development. Uh, and, and I am that. I mean, I do a lot. I, I go into companies, test out all their people, develop what that framework looks like, map it out, and then we think about what culture needs to be done, where the gaps are, where the dust, this is a strategic plan, this is your finance. That's what I do for a living in the company. And so I learned all of that in, in, um, in the, the uh, minority fellow, ethnic minority fellow program that I was in when I was a PhD student. So I, I think the take home message that I'm trying to get you to look at now as you walk out of here, go back and look at all your curricula, look at everything you took, and go back and look at that, not as I gotta take this because I gotta pass, because I see that happen a lot. No, go back and look at it and say, I need this because this is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And then if you didn't get that, then you need to turn that around and now go back to school or go to some continuing education, leadership programs, et cetera, to get that competency from maybe, you know, it's okay, but you want to be proficient. And then you'll be excellent at what you do. Yes, who else? Yes, I see you. These are good questions. My name is Stephanie, and I'm from Houston, Texas. I am currently uh, getting my master's from Anderson University, yeah. South Carolina. Um, my question is for someone who wants to um, achieve a level of leadership that in this country and provide advocacy support for um, minorities in their community, but do not have the foundational relationship at a certain point of their life. How do you, how would you? navigate them to figure life out. For instance, I am an immigrant. I came here to go to school mm -hmm. and um, as an international student, joined the military. So it's just been one place to the next, to the next, to the next. It's like, it's just a non-stop moving car. You can't, it doesn't stop, you just jump out. And um, I feel like for me, being in this space, I have learned so much today. I came here empty and I'm filled up. Okay. And I am so, <laughs> I am so grateful. Good. And um, certain things have been said today, and I realized these are spaces I want to be in, mm -hmm. but I do not have the environments to cultivate that push for me. So, what would you say to someone like me who wants to um, have that level of achievement so that I can pay forward for my cousins or my mm -hmm. friends who want that but do not? have the access to it because nobody talks about it in their environments or in their family. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's just my question. Well, what I would say, and I appreciate this because this goes whether you're an immigrant or not, you know, the truth of the matter is we all are, um, is this is not your last fellowship, okay? So when I went to be a White House fellow, I did that as, in my mind, as a postdoc. Uh, and But I knew that I had done a lot of things now policy-wise, but I had never worked at the White House. But I also knew I would never get to the World Health Organization in, unless I had worked at the White House and at HHS because it's a quota system about how many people have what country and the number of people. So I had done a lot of research to know the game. Um, same thing, you know, worked at the State Department, still do, do a whole lot of work with them. And so well, this is what I would say to you. Uh, there's a lot of great fellowships out there and further training you should think about. Um, be a diplomat. You have that skill set because you're an immigrant. And so you might want to go to a school like Georgetown and go to diplomatic training school. All right? And, and I'm trying to get a lot of nurses to do that type of thing. Now, because we need nurses who are ambassadors. You know, when Obama was um, president, Obama tapped me as the ambassador for the Global Health Initiative to go represent him uh, at, at uh, Bangladesh and Nepal. Now, we need that kind of person, okay? And so what I'm trying to do now, even at the Harvard Global Nursing Leadership Program, is bringing different people now to get, learn how to get those type of seats at the table. So think about where you want to be in the community and then do some research now 
on what other fellowships that might get you a global seat at the table. Because you are an immigrant, you've, been, you've done a lot of stuff, you've got this skill set now, but you might want to go get your PhD from, uh, in foreign affairs. And then you might end up at the State Department or at the FBI or the CIA or the Department of Defense. It, the sky's not the limit. Does that make sense? So um, that, that, you know, that's the level of thinking I want you to think about in your careers. And in my life, I work for all of them, DOD, FBI, all the craziness because it's global, it's public, it's what we call global health security. Um, and, and it helps you to really be able to make a difference. So hopefully we don't go through what we went through with COVID. You know, most people, uh, you might not know this about me, but I was, um, I was, I'm an elected member of the National Academy of Medicine. I was on the consensus study for global health for the future of the United States of America. Now we did that study for either President Trump or President Clinton. Clinton didn't make it. Trump doesn't listen. But in our writing and in that report, if you go back and read everything, we said, this is getting ready to happen. We're ripe. Our, 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 our systems are not right. We're not ready for this. And you see what happened. Mm -hmm. Craziness. Craziness. But uh, what happened in our country showed our Achilles heel. What is it, y'all? What is our Achilles heel when you think about what happened with COVID? Public health. Huh? Fractured public health. Pre totally fragile public health system. Awful. Um, no universal health coverage, right? Uh, you know, who died the most? The old folks, uh, black and brown people, people that don't have access, et cetera. You know? And then you have somebody bold like me. Did you do this? Did you do this? What, what's going on? Because I challenge people because I know too much, but I ain't going to say too much more because I'm getting in trouble. But I'm just saying, you know, that's why you need to sit at the table so these people can get up on TV. This is nothing. <laughs> then you can write and go like this. Here's the evidence that shows that you're complicit <laughs> in X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense? And that's what I hope that you all will do. I hope you will, you will think about doing a different type of career track because we need psych mental health people to be in that career track. You can never go wrong with knowing and understanding psych mental health care and being that nurse. And you know, a lot of times I love people because sometimes people, they say all kinds of funny things with me. Two things that happen to me all the time. You know, psych people are crazy. <laughs> and I love it when people say that. I'm like, right? Why are they, you know, look, that's another point of therapy. Why are they crazy? <laughs> what makes them crazy? I love it. And then, you know, after it's all over, I'm like, yeah, you know, because you know I'm psych. <laughs> and then the other thing that happens to me is people will say all kind of bad things, call people the N-word and everything, saying it right to me like I'm not. <laughs> in that category. And you know what I do? I let them go on. And I said, well, you know, this has been enlightening. Because um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm black. <laughs> and I love it, you know. And so that's what I love about this program, because when I look out, I see everybody. I see all races, all genders, all ethnicities. I see everybody. And this was had his dream. We thought it would get to this point. It started out mostly uh, African-American, but we thought it would get to this point. So anyway, I hope that um, this has been helpful to you. I can take maybe two more um, questions. Yes, I see some hands. This is 525. We get to it. And I see a hand. We, I think we got three people, and then I'm going to close it out. Hi, my name is Neftali Jules. I'm from Florida, and I'm getting my master's in psychiatric nurse practitioner at University of South Alabama. And the question I have for you is, for the ones that are here that do want to go into a leadership role, what skill set do you think they should have and they should possess to go into that role? Well, you've got to take all the things that, that you need to do in order to be the leader. So that, that is everything from being able to have great communication skills, psych, nursing, and to be strategic and decisive, decision-based, evidence-based, care, we do. So you're getting a lot of that, okay? 
You got to be financially savvy because people come to you and ain't got no money to buy the drugs, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. You got to go find the money, right? So you're bringing that to the table. But uh, I could go on and on. I mean, you got to be able to uh, uh, do what you need to do in order to build a team. And we are good at that. That's a whole life. You can't do it. No, we can't do the patience and things that many of us have taken care of in our life. It's a team of people mm -hmm. that's got to bring them out of whatever. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I would say you're already a leader. And you're already being trained to be a leader because you're a nurse. And one, I, you know, there were another one of my pet peeves, nurses need leadership. Nurses are the leaders. <laughs> what nurses need is you need to sharpen the saw, as Stephen Covey said, just keep it sharp. Keep it sharp. When you find out something you need, you do it. When you find out something is need, you do it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But we are the leaders. You are in a leadership program. It's called MFP. <laughs> in an intensive. Mm -hmm. Right? You are the leader. Okay, we had some other hands, I think. Okay, right here. Yes. Okay, so um, right before you started speaking, we were having a discussion about AI. On one hand, we know that one of the founders is speaking out against it, and we also know that it has the potential of doing really good. Um, you mentioned it briefly, and I was wondering what your thoughts are in terms of... I know how to do everything AI. That is the future. So you start teaching yourself how to use it. Let me tell you why they're speaking out on it, because they don't want you to buy into it. They want it all. Yeah. And then they will create what they want to do so they can control your mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't listen to everybody on TikTok, hip hop, this <laughs> hip hop, Instagram, or whatever they're doing. When somebody says you shouldn't do something, do it. your little antenna should go up and think, why? Why did they say that? Do some investigation. Now, you can use all technology for evil purposes. Yes. But my thing is, you got to get in there, and you, we have to get in there and program the voice of nursing. You know, it's, a, it's like a, a chat box, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And so it's high level, though, okay? Because it's basically the biggest experiment in the world where the machines now are reading everything on the Internet, everything's been written, everything's like, you know, and, and then they're putting it all in, and then they're spitting it all out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, but don't be scared of it, you know. Because um, remember, even when email came out, what did people say? End of the world. <laughs> okay, e e right? Right? E even when, um, uh, when the 2000 hit, do you remember that? And that oh, that's it, that's it. World is over. And they thought all of the, yeah, they thought all the computers were going to blow up and everything. Of course they're not going to blow up. You just put in a new data set so it goes to 2000 right. instead of 1999. Thank you, Prince. Okay? Right? Right? Does it help you? No, I'm the big time in AI. I'm on some of the research panels and everything um, trying to make sure. You, we have to be at the table. Mm -hmm. When you hear somebody say, oh, we do it, this is going to be the end of the world. And it's like... Yeah, it, it will be the end of your world because you want the money because you <laughs> don't want other people. And here's the thing, there's not a lot of black and brown people in that space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so we need more technology driven, digitally driven um, scientists. Because yes. that's where the world is going. Remember by 2050, we are going to be in a severe situation in our country and the world when it comes to the future of education. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a whole lot of different um, things happening because we won't have enough population, I'm just going to use for example, in the United States of America to even do the work. Mm -hmm. So they're going to create the machines and everything, just like some of these crazy movies you see. This stuff is going to be real. You'll wake up one day and you'll have a little person that comes to you that's not real and say, it's time now. Uh, Stephanie. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm embracing it. I want the robot dog. I want the, everything. <laughs> I want everything. Scratch my teeth, take it for a walk, you know, program today. I want chocolate. Without gaining weight. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord, yes. Isn't that the truth? Oh, my goodness. All right, one break. Um, so mine's kind of a two-part question. My name's Rashida. I'm at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Miami. Um, one is uh, you did a lot of leadership um, programs and applied for a lot of grants. Um, how did you uh, choose them and find them, but also how did you do all of that while also scaling yourself and your business to be a global brand and presence? It's a good question, because uh, I'm not trying to be poor. 
You know, this what I am saying to you that you are in, that you are, it's, this is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. And so you don't, you, you have to hire people, you have to have people who work with and for you. Um, you know, one of the things I say to executive nurses, like they'll come to me and they'll say, I'm just so tired, Stephanie, I gotta clean the house, I gotta do this, and this. Why are you still cleaning the house? <laughs> <laughs> now what happened, because it's not like you're not making some money. Come on now. And I think sometimes we are designed, because we're nurses, to do everything for everybody except for ourselves. But I, I have an enterprise, so I, in that enterprise I have an enterprise. I have people that I pay to do all kinds of things for me. I have the driver when I need it. I have the, the situations where I need to create the team, fly the team in, talk to the team. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta you gotta build that out though. You know, because I'm a strategic thinker and planner. J you do that for your life. Here's where I see myself. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what the closet is. This is my. You can make a storyboard. I don't care what you do. Here's how I see myself in three years. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because you can't, when you hear somebody like me, you can just get exhausted. Oh my God, you, what in the world? But you see, a lot, a lot of my personality, I am so much fun. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Man, I love to party, <laughs> dance. I'm fun. Okay, but I'm a smart worker. Does that make sense? And I use technology to help me do an enormous amount of things. And so, well, I'm coming over here, and I'm like, the man in the taxi said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going through some emails real quick. And I said, and where are you going? This ain't where you going to He said, lady, I'm not going to say where he was from. It's hard for us to learn Washington, D.C. when we're not Washingtonians. I said, I know. Um, I know it is. And, but we had a good laugh about that. But if I had to look up, God knows which uh, Hilton I would have been <laughs> But I hope, you got to, you, listen, you, you've been educated to be a nurse and thank the nursing process. The nursing process is a scientific process. It is a process that we can use for our own personal lives, for our leadership development, et cetera. Work the process, because it's about processes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, listen, my time is up because you're getting ready to graduate. And, um, uh, basically, uh, Janet can, can let you know how to get in touch with me. But some of you I have talked to, and you know I will call you back. I will uh, make time for you. But one of the things I start the conversation with is this is a crucial conversation. And so you got to have a thick skin with me. And so some people don't have a thick skin, you know, because we have a lot of snowflakes. And people, you know, you tell them one thing, what they need to do. Oh, no. and, but guess what? <laughs> I'm a therapist. <laughs> we can bring that back around, bring that back out. Does that make sense? Listen, be bold, be beautiful, be brilliant, number one. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in yourself. And understand what your North Star is and what keeps you whole. And number three, hold your own keys to your success and go forth and be all that you can be to make a difference in the whole world. Congratulations and thank you for having me.